Let's just hop right into it about Rosanna because this is an interesting update and I think that we're all just interested to see where it's gone. So as you guys know, I covered this the other day. Rosanna Pensino made an allegation against Mr. Beast, which ended up being true. He did edit her out of the top three winners. Her allegations were correct. I think her idea of why he did it was probably incorrect she claimed it was more uh feelings of misogyny and possible like let's say light discrimination but i would argue that it was probably just a business move and considering that mr beast isn't a youtuber he's a youtuber who's in business we have to remember that he's not like me i'm a youtuber who works completely independently it's not the same he is a youtuber with 200 million I thought it was 100 million still, 200 million subscribers. He's working with huge companies and that particular video was actually sponsored or worked with YouTube's premium. So even YouTube was in on it. So I think what she realized and what we talked about even on the last live stream was that she's gonna run into some legal issues if she doesn't watch herself because she keeps treating Mr. Beast like he's a YouTuber instead of a guy in business. And that's a huge mistake. And I don't know how she got to 14 million subscribers and didn't learn it herself. Now, she had to walk it back because I'm assuming a legal team got in touch with her because her tweet about it is an obvious like, I messed up and I have to take this all back now. She obviously signed possibly... Um, some sort of paperwork that said she couldn't talk about this. I am not sure, of course. But if you read her tweet she put out, she said, I would like to apologize to Mr. Beast. I should have expressed my feelings privately and handled things directly. I will be removing all the posts where I talk about the creator games and Jimmy. I will be honest uh, that in that, the thousands of death threats I've received today are contributing are a contributing factor. But I also do sincerely hear the feedback from so many of you. Now, I'm not sure that isn't just a PR move, right? <laughs> Z King, it was just her white woman feminism showing. Now I said that, I said that this feels like white woman feminism and some of the people, one person was like, what's that mean? And I realized like, oh, some people might not know what that means. Cause that's a very bubble speak like, oh, white woman feminism. Usually women of color have come together to point out that some versions of feminism, mostly run by white women, tend to be watered down issues that are just so privileged in so many ways, i.e. a multimillionaire being edited out of a fake competition curated by YouTube for fake, like for views. And yes, money was real at the end, but only for the top winner anyway. So it's not like she lost out on money. And so it just feels like not a problem in terms of making it one. And she wanted to turn it into a women's issue. She tried to turn it into a women's issue. Now, I will say this to give her the benefit of the doubt, and I really do believe this. I understand her feelings were hurt, and I think that's valid. I think her feelings being hurt is so relatable. I think my feelings would have been hurt too. But again, turning it into a women's issue is so amplifying something that almost you have to make a boogeyman now now you have to make an argument in a case for jimmy being misogynistic which was never the case because a uh, quackity a male also got switched around his placement in editing and that's that's just that's just business at that point right so i will say that i feel for her in that regard that her feelings they're allowed to be hurt you know what i mean now Funny enough, did you guys see, I saw a couple comments on Trisha's video, the original podcast in which she told this story and she quite, the comments quite literally were saying, oh my gosh, is that uh, Rosanna's voice? I've never heard her real voice. I've only seen her videos. Oh my gosh, is that her real, is that how she really talks? So many people who watch her baking videos, I guess are under the impression that she has like a performance voice and a real voice. And I think that's normal and natural. Even right now, can you tell that I'm, I'm not speaking exactly like myself? I'm speaking in a flow. I've got it going on. I'm thinking about what to say. I'm thinking about new people watching this monologue. I'm thinking about, oh, if I'm a new viewer and I'm just watching Britney Simon, what's the vibe? I'm thinking about so many things because I am a content creator who this is my life, right? I'm less like Jimmy because I don't ever plan to be big and famous like that. I just like to be myself and make content. But there's a flow to how I talk that is performative. And that's probably what people are hearing in her baking videos. It's not that she's fake fake. It's that she just puts on a performance like anyone does. You, do you think Gordon Ramsay isn't doing a shtick? Like Gordon Ramsay is playing a character. Like Gordon Ramsay is playing, Beyonce is playing a character. Everybody is playing a character. Listen to Britney Spears' book. 
there are characters being played left and right. You have to think about your branding and your shtick and your image and what's the version of you you want to show to the audience. Because again, people don't want authenticity because when you're authentic, then they have to face themselves or you they have to face you or they might find something about you they find distasteful. Like I grew up in a world where like you never talked about gay people or mentioned politics because if you did, you could alienate part of your base, right? Look at what's happening now. People are... You know what I mean? Uh, alienating their base by sharing their political opinions or whose side are they on in the war? And it's so f interesting, right? That nobody's quite paying attention to that. The fact that people people were saying this gives off very much like people are dying, Kim. Like this is the moment she decides to come out with this because in her bubble right there, like she's not even thinking about what's happening in the Middle East, which is fair. A lot of people aren't. So she's thinking, I'm on Trisha's podcast. Let me do this thing. But again, she's a person who's mad at Jimmy, but not mad at Logan Paul, which is fine. And not mad at Miranda Sings, which is fine. And not mad at Trisha, even though they all built careers off of facades and performances, just like Jimmy was doing. She's only mad because it impacted her and her ego. She even said, this is the first time I felt in a long time that I accomplished something, which is ripped to her ego. This is sort of the problem that I face when I come onto the internet where I feel like all of the things that I've suffered as a minority or as a person or as a mentally ill person who's tried to get better and gotten better is that there's no way my ego is going to be wrapped in some collaboration I'm doing with another person. It's always going to be about Brittany and her work. Like I said, I'm in competition with myself and nobody else, you know, and I'm pretty easy competition, you know what I'm saying? So it's like kind of that idea where hearing her talk, I feel for her. But I wish she had told this to a therapist and not millions of people. And that's the lesson she's got to learn, that this was a moment for your therapist to help you build your self-esteem back up or for you to go meditate with some philosophers or for you to read a couple of books. Like this was an opportunity for growth. And I've been there, like I've said in my past, when I've had opportunities with much bigger content creators, when I realized there was going to be a lot of performativity expected of me and I really struggled with that. Um, I did feel like I just wanted to tell the world, like they're lying to you. But the problem is, is like the audience does subconsciously know that whether they want to admit it or not, or they really do know that whether they admit it or not. I think people who are genuinely hurt that Jimmy edits his videos, I think you are the naive category of people like Rosanna who are well-intentioned, but holy shit, you would die in business. How does she, how has she even made it this far in business? Like who is her handler, right? Like this is very confusing to me, which is why a part of me is like, is she lying and fooling all of us? Like how does she... Everyone always tells me, because I didn't watch her, I had no idea who she was. I was on the Tyler Oakley part and Michael Buckley part of original YouTubers and Philip DeFranco and all those people, but I was never on her side of YouTube. How did she get to 14 million subscribers and she's never had this conversation with the business team? She, when she had her stuff on the Food Network, nobody ever told her, hey, Rosanna, you have to speak a certain way and look a certain way and they're going to edit things. She even talked about it with Trish. So they did admit, at least on Trisha's podcast, that like, oh yeah, like production's interesting. The way they do stuff is interesting. It's very like, it's not the way it seems. Then is she lying to us or to herself? Where's the cognitive dissonance? And then of course, everyone's like, Rosanna's so wonderful. I would trust her. She never fights with anyone. Is that part of the shit? Or is she just so neurodivergently naive and her sense of justice just like spilled over? And that's the question. So we always want to like be open and you know, just open to the idea that like, oh, she probably just didn't mean anything by it or she's secretly a malicious, evil, like superhero or super villain. She's probably not a super villain, right? <laughs> people hardly are, ever are. Even Jimmy or people who heavily edit or Trisha being a chicken nugget. Most of that's just because that's what they think the audience wants, which it was. It was what the audience wanted. And also, I don't know if people know this about Jimmy's work, but it's not going to age with him, right? Jimmy's work lately has changed where there's like a lot more explosions and they're going CGI in space. And everyone's like, why is it changing? Because the new generation of 12 year olds are coming in and that's what they're going to want. Jimmy knows his base. He knows his brand. His base is going to age into their 40s and 50s. And he's going to keep making content for 13 year olds. And eventually you're going to stop watching Jimmy. But the children, the new generations won't. And that's good. That's a good brand right there, baby. You know, it's not like what the people who make Barbie dolls age with their customer base unless they do a nostalgia Barbie, right? They age with the girls coming up or the boys coming up. So again, I feel like in order for you as an individual to really feel comfortable in existence and existing, 
you have to radically accept what bubble you are facing and interacting with, right? And again, I'm just like a little person on this planet who's like figured out a few things for herself. And I'm just trying to give everybody like a little bit of a chance to figure it out for themselves. But business is business is business is business is business. War is business. Art is business. This is business. Everything is business. And then the relationship you're having with that business is built on your own values. Right? If you want authentic YouTubers, pick somebody who has a small channel. If you want people who are performative and sell out, pick the guys with 10 million subbies and more. You do not reach 10 million subbies plus without selling something to you, which is fine. That's great. I love being sold products. Thank you. I just bought Britney Spears' book. Sell me a product, girl. I love a good CD. Sell me a product. I love a good lingerie set. Sell me a product. But if you want to interact with authentic content creators, pick small ones. Because small content creators haven't had the opportunity, most likely, or they have chosen not to sell their soul for the drama. There are YouTubers in this space right now who are relatively small, who literally will avoid interacting with bigger content creators because the drama is so insane, because the pressure to perform is so insane, because it's so much easier just to say like, I'm gonna do my own thing. Even recently in Mr. Beast's latest video, it was sponsored by Prime, Logan Paul. There's money in this relationship. And Rosanna was just an old school YouTuber that YouTube probably brought in to be featured in this video. She is not consequential to the bigger picture. So her trying to make it a women's issue when realizing like this is a business issue. And I'm going to say one last thing, which I'm sure will get clipped out of context, but probably not. But listen to me when I say this. There is a part of me that understands why men think women are bad at business because this was a horrible business decision. This was a feelings of values decision, which I love. And as a woman who's done that a thousand times, I'm with Rosanna on that. I feel her in that regard. But in terms of business, bad business decision, my girl, right? Bad business decision. It's a great, like, and again, I have no problem like dying on a hill of your values. That's beautiful, man. I'm rooting for that all the time. But at the same time, you have to understand that it's not even personal. These guys are just trying to make money and they are proving time and time again that they're doing it. So every time you think, oh, Logan Paul is like a scammer, or Mr. Beast is a scammer, you have to understand like this is what the world of millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars are, is built on, is convincing the audience they need this thing that they absolutely do not need, right? T convincing the audience that like this is a product you can't get anywhere else, which might be true to an extent, right? It might be true. Even H3H3, like Ethan Klein, who I love H3H3. I really do. I love Ela Klein. Like I follow her on Instagram, like vibes. She's a queen. I love her. They go back and forth with their audience all the time because the moment they're more authentic, part of their audience hates them, which is why they do best when they perform, when they just put on skits, when they're funny, when they take a niche position that matches the audience they have at the moment. They used to be... Jordan Peterson fans, and now they're fighting leftists about the Israel-Gaza like issue with Palest Palest uh, Palestine, right? Like literally, H3 sees it in motion. Your audience doesn't want you to be authentic. Your audience doesn't care about your suffering when you're a big YouTuber. Your audience does not care about your suffering when you're a big YouTuber. Your audience only cares about how they feel about your suffering. So if they feel like they're on your side, now they care. If they feel like you're the, they're the opposite of you, now they really don't care about your suffering. And that's the, the like catch 22 of being in that bubble, right? That is the catch 22 of being famous and popular is like, there's so many, there's so much like happiness to be had on the smaller level numbers. You just don't have the millions of dollars. But there is more joy, I think, in ending up like mostly associated with your values, more so than the money. But it is about money. And that's fine. If you're in the game of capitalism and making money, girl, kill it. Like she could be killing it right now, but I can see that I think she wants something a little bit more authentic. You know what I mean? And I don't know what that means for her. She has a video still up on her channel of Miranda Sings, right? Of Colleen Ballinger that was recently accused of incredible abuse towards minors. 
And I frankly would take that video down if I was her, but she's not me. And so I have to wonder, well, why does Rosanna keep that on her channel? Like, isn't that weird that she's keeping that video up? And then I have to wonder, like, why is she keeping that video up? Is it for business? Or is it because she literally doesn't think Colleen's guilty? Which, or does she think, like, what does she think? Or is she not thinking about it? Is she so, like, naive in her head she's not even thinking about it? So there are layers to this for sure. But I think, look, as, as a person who always wanted to be an entrepreneur in a, a much more aggressive way, as a person that's read every like book, like every business book, my brother, I have a brother in sales and him and I always exchange books. It's clear to me, at least, that I'm always going to pick my values over money. And my values are pretty strict about what money I can accept. So I'll always remain successful, but probably like slowly. And I've always been more successful every year. So I'm not complaining. But that's the difference. Why is she complaining? She's not happy. And again, I'm just a okay, I'm just a girl. Well, I'm really a woman at this point, but I'm I'm just a person who's figured out some things about her life, who's learned to make peace with any part she has she is on the journey, right? Like this is my choice. I made this decision. I feel like when I see people with a lot of success and they're still not happy or confident in themselves. Sometimes I want to ask them, like, did you even make this decision? Is this even your life? How could you be so successful and still, so we got to figure it out, girl. Where's the balance? What are we missing? Right? So in my opinion, by my observation, totally subjective, could be wrong. Rosanna's not at peace. She is not joyful. Right? And so she fought a weird battle to tackle her insecurities, which led it to be clear, like, I hate to say it, but another women, a woman we can't take seriously was, this is why I call it white woman feminism. It's like she chose the most superficial reason to make this a women's issue. And now all the guys are like, oh, this is why nobody likes girls. And I'm like, it's not that you weren't going to like the girls anyways. Like, let's be real. The ones in the boys club were never going to like her anyways. Like, so, okay, we're not appealing to misogynists here. But if you want to compete with the boys... You have to decide if you're willing to do that, which you might not be willing to because the boys play dirty out here, okay? Boys play dirty. And the girls who follow suit and play dirty like the boys, I mean, you could do you. But like pay attention to that choice because it is a choice you can make. I think Rosanna has a really good intentions, I think, probably, maybe. Um, just, uh, you know. Pick your battle smartly, and uh, I don't know what paperwork she signed that made it so she had to definitely give this apology out. <laughs> but uh, maybe read the fine print next time, girly. Damn, I think she really thought she could do it somehow. I don't know how. I don't know how she thought she could go against YouTube and Jimmy and his like networking resources. Like, how did she think she was gonna be able to do that? You know, so interesting. Who told her in her life she's got this? Probably, probably who, H3? Who told her? God, if she came to me, I'd be like, I'm sorry, whose lawyers are you paying? How much money you got, girl? You might be worth $9 million, but Jimmy's worth a lot more than that. Mm. Crazy. Crazy. Okay, let's go back to your comments here. Anyone else seen the awful D'Amelio working at Walmart video? Honestly, can I be real with you? I think, okay, there's two groups of poor people that hate this video. Poor people that like it because a celebrity is like coming down to earth and people who hate it because a celebrity is mocking everyday reality for some people. So I actually thought it was kind of funny. Obviously, I don't know who they really are because I'm too old to know who the Demelios are. I just know they're YouTubers, I think, or TikTokers or something. And I will say that I, I again, one of those business decisions where if you get the right crowd of fans, they want you to do this. They think it's fun. You know what I mean? To have celebrities work at a Walmart for some customers, that is so exciting. And for some people, especially in this economy, it just feels like you're mocking them. So I would have argued that they should have made it a charity run. They should have made sure that it was for like the people at the Walmart or maybe D'Amelio paid for everyone's like pay or give everyone like an extra bonus Christmas gift this year, something like that. But in this economy, watching a very wealthy young person come in and pretend to be poor is like, Ma'am, you know what I mean? So I was gonna like, again, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I also, I'm bad at marketing. It's not like I know, but I feel like I'd be able to be like, don't do that. Don't do that. There's, um, what was my partner and I watching? We were watching something and I was thinking, man, we really need like a Gen Z or somebody on staff for some of these 
decisions people make where they're like, don't do that, you'll get canceled. Don't do that, you'll get canceled. Because like so many people do things in marketing where I'm like, don't do that. Have you read the internet today? They're gonna be mad at you. Because obviously these businesses don't want people mad at them, right? The chicken nugget moment was Trisha, with Trisha's iconic, everything Trisha did back in the day was iconic, let's be real. It's just like, she did it though. She sensationalized and got on camera and cried. And it was a thing, you know? She's on a lot of Try Guys popular shows, maybe being around the Try Guys who are soft boys. She thought Mr. Beast is like that too. Oof, that was a mistake. And the, the Try Guys are really lovely in a lot of ways, right? Because like one of their partners cheated on his wife and they like severed ties with him, right? I think that's really lovely. Like I think that was really great, right? That's the Try Guys. I thought that was really awesome. And, and, and honestly, I'm about that life. Like, I'm a little bit like, hey, you cheated on your wife with an employee? You're out. No second chances. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, I don't even know what they were thinking. Like, I, you're crazy. Like, that's just crazy from a business perspective. Like, what a horrible decision to make. And then on top of that, you put everybody at risk for the brand. Like, no, ma'am. And Try Guys, they have a very specific brand. They are also not just YouTubers. They have a brand. They work with normie companies. They get normie subscript uh, sponsorships. So that's the other thing, right? It's like, look, I don't have any plans to ever be normal enough to get sponsorships. And I don't ever think I'll ever get really famous enough for normies to, to, to work with me either, right? So when I think about my job, I think about how to be successful and make good money and slow and steady and be very happy and joyful with my choices through my values. But these people are like, okay, how do we make the brand? You, what's your shtick? You, how do we get Starbucks to like us? You, how do we get like, they're thinking about companies. And I'm just thinking about how to wake up every day and like love my life, <laughs> which for them could be a version of that. So again, know what game you're playing. I still am confused on what game Rosanna is playing, you know? Um, Yaya says, at what point is the manipulation of the two C's on the uh, on the two A's and not it's what you want to see? Maybe it's not. Maybe they think it's because of how much and how long the masses have been manipulated. The world hasn't chosen what they want to see because they've been told what they want to see. Girl, you are not putting enough responsibility on people. You are just, you're basically saying most people are too dumb to take care of themselves and marketing is so good that they can't be held responsible for their consumerism, but that's just not true, right? Plenty of people are smart enough to know some people are scamming them, but not the people they like. That's the problem, right? And honestly, at that point, girl, you should get scammed. Or you need to learn, because unless you're like specifically targeted, that everyone is always selling you a product, right? So unless you're being literally targeted, like old people that are getting called personally at home and tricked, that's so bad. That's so unethical. If you're just being sold by a commercial and that's enough for you, if you're listening to your free favorite radio host, how many times does do people have to, like conservatives have to understand, like Sean Hannity, oh, now they hate him. Oh, Bill O'Reilly, now they hate him. Oh, Rush Limbaugh, blah, blah, blah. You guys go through modes. It's like you pick your favorites, realize they've been scamming you and think, I'll just go to the next one who's definitely not scamming me. Sir, if they're worth millions of, like millions of billions of dollars, they're fucking scamming you in some way, okay? Because you don't want authentic. Nobody wants, no conservative wants Tucker Carlson to come out and say, oh, by the way, I've been fucking scamming you and I'm totally using you for views. And even though there is a radio recording of Tucker Carlson literally saying this about his audience, his audience goes like, uh, but not me though. He's not talking about me though. Girl, get scammed. Okay, get scammed. Get scammed. There are literally clippings. Like, like how many, how many videos do people have to make about people? How many articles have to come out? How many, I just don't believe that about my favorite. I just don't believe that about my favorite. It's like, okay, girl, then call it your favorite and stop crying me a river. If you don't want to learn from your mistakes, like that is going to be your life. Again, how many times can people hold your hand through life? And then at the same time, these same people that you're worried about getting manipulated are the same people that will fight against your civil rights and vote against you. Will call people the N word or like racial, like racial, like the the F word, the whatever. They'll literally be racist, or vice versa. They'll be um the worst kind, the white liberal kind, where it's like infantilized people of color, color and minorities. And then they'll be like, "I'm a victim of a scam, girl. You are a victim of your own consciousness. You are a victim of your own relationship with your consciousness." Yes, there are real victims in the world who are genuinely no clue, but they have to first admit they were a victim.
because the moment you try to help some of these people, not me, I'm not stupid. You think I'm a sheep? You think I would fall for the scam? I would never fall for a scam. Girl, get scammed. Get scammed. Okay, if you're not going to listen, if you're not going to consider you could be wrong, if you're going to literally hop from one Candace Owens to another Candace Owens, one this thing to this thing, girl, go for it, girl. Peace and love, girl. You want to get out of the bubble? Pop the bubble. But I'm not going to infantilize millions of adults who not only pay taxes, participate in this economy, vote for politicians and against my civil rights. Okay, I'm not going to infantilize all of them, but I will radically accept that they might be like stuck in a bubble that might not be where their joy lies, which is the point of my work, right? I'm just a nobody. I'm just a girl who figured out something about her life and it came down to admitting that I was dumb and I'm still very dumb and that I could be being tricked at every fucking moment of my everything. When, when Wick asked me, what if RJ's lying to you? So RJ's lying to me and I'm falling for it. Okay, future Brittany will reach that when that happens. Or I can go with my intuition, which tells me, eh, I think RJ's doing okay. But maybe, maybe RJ's pulling the wool over my eyes. Maybe she's scamming me. Maybe, maybe. But I'm not afraid of being tricked because I'm open to the idea that they could be lying. Because everyone apparently lies. So it is what it is. The only thing I won't do that other people do do, and I used to do in the past, is I don't sacrifice my well-being for other people unless it's a sure bet. I won't invest in my siblings. I won't invest in my inner circle. I will not. Values over loyalty. Because no offense, some of y'all make horrible decisions about your life and future. Some of y'all spend money you don't have, risk other people's lives for your own benefit. A lot of y'all lie up your ass for your reputation. And I'm not going to bank my survival on that. So RJ, Sneeko, all those people that I'm rooting for to have like a joyful life, my, rep my, my life, my literal life isn't tied into their decisions. And just like my life isn't tied into everyone else's, ultimately we're just doing what we can by living next to each other. Now, hopefully millions of people don't decide all at once to make it, or billions rather, make the whole planet unhabitable, right? But I'm just going with the flow as much as anyone else, but I will not infantilize all of these adults. Okay? I will not do it, I will not do it, okay? Especially with people dedicating their life out here to trying to save people from these scams and they still won't listen. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Also, what is a scam? Right? A, even the word scam is so subjective. Um, okay. I genuinely don't think most people would prefer to have the wool pulled over their eyes if they saw everything. Not just a peek. I think most of the world would choose to see authenticity. I, I disagree. I just disagree. History does not show that. No data shows that. This channel doesn't show that. You're kind of doing it right now. You're assuming, instead of looking at the data and accepting it for what it is, right? You're making a little bit of a dream opinion. What is your data to say this? What proof do you have of this? Name a family member that you've quote unquote shown the truth to. Name somebody in your life that you've tried to be like, hey, did you know this uh, isn't true? And tell me how many people have radically changed who they are the moment you told them that. Or did it take years of convincing? Did it take meditation on their part? Did it take a lot of fucking concerted effort, right? That's the challenge I'm giving to the world. Accept that the world is exactly the way it is because it's a reflection of us. The world keeps saying, I don't want to be tricked, but they trick themselves into thinking they know when they're being tricked instead of accepting that they will be tricked. You cannot avoid being tricked. You could only work hard to mitigate harm reduction. You can only harm reduce. You can't eradicate harm. Most people absolutely want to stay ignorant and most people are willing to admit that they don't know. I know so little about the world. I only know what I know about my consciousness and humans Sort of. But the way the world works, the complicated layers, exactly what goes into everything, like there's so much to know about so much. And again, most of us, we just don't know. None of us do. Not even the people that seem like they know. No. You know? They are businessmen. While their product is a shtick and characters, it's a hustle. They get the hustle. Mm. You know? Uh, if fives are less manipulated by the glitter company spread, I didn't say that. Did I say that? How is it not better to be a five? I didn't say that. 
I'd rather not be manipulated and see how things are rather than be okay with being lied to. I'm just asking questions, not commenting. Of course, girl, of course. And I'm just passionate because like, this is what I love about like these, like this conversation. But fives are not less susceptible to falling for the bullshit. They're not because that's extrospection. Fiveness is about introspection and a reality of not knowing. So some fives, like I say, have two moments where they hop back into the bubble and they go, I have to identify myself with a belief. I'm going to take a stand now. And then the five makes a decision and can make a decision to be like, I think this, but they could be wrong. It's just knowing they could be wrong. And some of them are arrogant enough because like people go people, no matter who you are, you all live in a bubble. Again, being a five isn't better. I never said it was better. It is the worst way to look at my levels. Being a five is not better. It just is. It's not better. It just is. It's a specific relationship you're having with your consciousness. Your consciousness. Yours. It's not better. It's just different. And you might need it as an individual consciousness, but you probably won't need it if you're a different kind of consciousness. You know? I saw the statement immediately when Brittany was right. Like I knew you were right, but a lot of people don't call out OG YouTubers. Well, I don't even know how right I was. I just know like, oh, this seems like, like sh something's wrong here. And again, I think this is why I like my work because it's not about like, oh, Brittany was right, even though I love being right because it means I can trust myself, but it's more like, hey, I wish they had a Brittany in their life to go, don't do this. This, you cannot win this battle and you have to win it in a very strategic way if you're gonna do this. And you have to understand why you're mad about this. And so my heart goes out to Rosanna and everybody in the world that doesn't understand the game they're playing or the game they're they're being played. And that's my concern. It's like, I don't even know. That's why I have the time when I'm like, hmm, why is this person saying that? That doesn't make sense. And everyone goes, oh, it's this reason and this reason. I'm like, Ch -ch -ch. that's the distraction. What's the root reason? What's the root cause? What's the actual reason that brought this consciousness to this decision and said like, oh, this is what I'm gonna do with my life. Of course, the superficial reasons are there. Oh, you insulted this and you did this and you did. I wanna know the actual root cause. Like I wanna know the real reason because people don't want to, they don't wanna go there, right? The same people that are like, I'm logical and reasonable and, and like, I'm really smart, make consistent decisions that are so harmful and self-destructive. Why? Because they are defining those words differently. And that's fine. You know? Oh my God, yes. Sounds like the simple life. Paris already did it, honey. Paris and Nicole doing the simple life was fire. That, I remember that as a kid. That was so good. That was so good. My gut reaction was to feel grossed out by the PR team that thought this was a good idea. It's just lame. That's what I'm saying. I would love to know if Rosanna, like, is she married? Does she have, like, a family? Like, again, I run all this by my family. I run all of this by my family and friends before I do stuff or my husband now because I'm like, mm, my feelings when I do this. And then it's like, no, I have to meditate with myself and make a better decision. It's because of the gap between rich and poor is getting bigger, not just financially, but the reality of life for sure. It's like when the Ace family worked at the one restaurant, stop. What did Tucker say? There's like this infamous radio interview where he talks about the peasants and how you have to convince the, convince the peasants that they don't want to be in the tower with you, that they actually want to stay down there. Because, you know, he's the son, grandson of a billionaire. He's the Swanson family frozen food legacy. So he like he's he's always been wealthy. He's always been an elite. But his job is to convince people that – being an elite is bad, even though he's reveling in it. So you it, you want to convince people that you don't need to be an elite. Now, here's the thing. As a spiritual person or like a person who believes in like meditation and like <laughs> and more introspective work, obviously, I don't think you want to be an elite person, but you also don't want to like live in poverty and slash poverty is a mindset versus how much money you have in your bank account, right? It's not about do I have negative 100,000 grand in my bank account? Most people coming out of college do. But it's the mindset and the relationship we're having with that money that matters. The elite have just as much of a poisonous relationship with their money as I think people in poverty do. And it's not, again, not people who are in poverty. That's not what I mean to say. It's the mindset of poverty and the mindset of being elite. Like, yes, get your bag and have money, but also you, like, it doesn't, you're not less of a person if you have no money, 
but also you could be less of a person if you had a million dollars and less of a person if you had no money. And it's like the money isn't the thing that we should be judging anything on. It's the relationship you're having with the money. It's the relationship you're having with your joy in relation to that money. So Tucker does this thing where he like convinces his audience he's one of the rebels and that's why he's working with Elon Musk right now and that's why he got conservatives like my father to be convinced that like Tucker's one of the good ones he's working with Elon and being a rebel against the system and I'm like oh my god y'all deserve it like I love you I wish you all the best may I die peacefully and swiftly when this world ends but Lord Jesus, I can't even, I can't even get through to the people who I love the dearest to me because they refuse to engage, which is their right. And then that seems to be everyone, which is their right and my right to not care <laughs> that it is what it is, girls. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is, girls. Okay. Your job as a consciousness is to radically accept that people don't want your help. They just want to talk like they do. You know? <sighs> Girl. Mm. Who is Candace Owens? Nobody. She's a she's like a YouTuber slash conservative talking pundit. She probably thought because the other guy broke the NDA two years ago and seemingly got no backlash. I think he probably got no backlash because nobody picked it up. It didn't, she didn't, he, you know, she didn't come out and make a statement about, or he didn't come out and make a statement about it. Like, that's probably why, because Quackity did mention it, but it just didn't get picked up as a story. And he also, I don't think he wanted to make it that big of a story. But also, do these YouTubers read their NDAs? Are they reading their paperwork that they're signing? Are they thinking like, oh, I'm just going to do a regular YouTube thing and go, you know, this isn't a regular YouTube thing, guys. Yes, regular YouTubers like my level and like, you know, smaller content creators to whatever extent you mean that by like me and Abba and everything. It's not like Abba and I signed a contract before we did my podcast. We just hung out. That's different than Mr. Beast level where you're doing a job with YouTube and YouTube is there sponsoring the, you know what I'm saying? People just don't want to admit how shallow humanity is. Well, it's just where we are in the evolution, you know? It's just where we are in the part of our life. Like, it's like it's better, you know, we have to radically accept it. We have to radically accept, like, this is it, baby. This is it, and this is good. We are happy, you know? We are, this is, there's a lot to be joyful for. It is still better than our past ancestors lived through. No, thank you, the past. Every time people are like, Brittany, what part of the past would you like to live in? This one. 10 seconds ago, girl. I don't want to live in no past. We are still doing better than our ancestors. I will take it. Okay. I will take it, ma'am. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Not to say everyone is universally having the same experience around the world, but like, you will never convince me that this is still not the greatest time to be alive. You know? Ah, uh, you know? Mm-mm. How do we burst the bubbles? Well, you can only burst the ones in relation to your own consciousness, right? I might have misheard last stream. I thought you responded when someone said our fives less likely to be tricked and you responded either, maybe, or probably. Well, it depends on what you mean tricked. Are fives less likely compared to twos? Maybe, but it depends on what, right? Because like a five is still a person with bias and that bias is what tricks you. So maybe fives would have less bias, but not without bias. So maybe you could look at it like that, but it's, I don't, I just want to make sure and clarify that fives aren't like these perfect beings who never get tricked or never fall for scams or are perfect, perfect, perfect because fives are humans with brains and sometimes you get, you know, dementia. Sometimes you're just in your bias. Sometimes you're in your feelings. Like a five who's um, a Palestinian or a Jew might feel a way about the conflict, right? And they might, their bias might come out all of a sudden. They might be like, team me, team whatever I am, right? Or they might not. And no matter how we phrase it, we all have bias. Like I really, I just, I can't believe it sometimes when I see humans who are like, I don't have bias. I was like, girl, go watch a sunset. You're useless. Of course you have bias. Like how do you not see it in the way that you talk, the way you think, your opinions. When you read an article and you share where you read that article, that's your bias. Like we all have a bias. And so this idea that we don't is like so fascinating. Five is a relationship you're having with your consciousness. It's not always clear how much it helps you 
with the world, with existence. It's a relationship you're having with existing. Inwards, 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 inwards. You're looking inwards, okay? Which is why when people, um, they go, well, if, if like, um, Sneeko was a three or a four, he'd be better. And I'm like, why? That doesn't make any sense. Why? Like, yeah, maybe, for sure. I'd love that. But he'd be better based off his own values, not yours, right? I agree. Like, his three, four journey has been wild. Just wild. What a mess. But also, eh makes sense he's figuring it out right he's like under 30 by 30 he'll probably stabilize into something more interesting but at the same time maybe not right he gets to make the decision and if he wants to just pick a bubble and thrive in it he has his own biases he has his own journey right but ultimately like a five is a relationship you're having with your introspection intro and yes it can have a relationship with existence obviously extrospection is a part of it but it's not fully formed the way that people perceive it. Like, oh, if you're a five, you'll radically accept that like this is – it's not It's not about that. It's about you recognizing how much more you need to learn, how much you don't know, how much you're like, oh, my God, I don't know. Like, I genuinely don't know and I think that needs to be okay, right? Because it's easy to go back into the bubble or evoke your bias and say like, okay, I think this. And then people are like, that's not the answer. And I'm like, but what is the answer to a relationship I'm having with my consciousness? How do I, Brittany, the consciousness away from everyone feel about this thing? And is that an okay opinion to even share, right? The answer is no, by the way. If you've noticed, I haven't made any strong stances in public about any of my opinions uh, in relation to things that make people extra upset for, no, you know, for very emotional and reasonable reasons, right? Because everyone's very upset. But it's because, like, the world doesn't need my opinion nor deserve it. But also, it doesn't want to hear it. It doesn't want to hear it. And if I've learned anything as a content creator, it's give the audience what it wants, even if they don't know what they want. And what they don't want is for, okay, they don't want it. As much as people are begging for it, they don't want it. They don't want it. They want to be reassured. And life isn't always about that, right? Uh, Blackheart, you might be new. You said, as a therapist, how do you work extreme people uh, working on their bias and their self? I'm not a therapist. Are you talking to me? I'm not a therapist. I'm a YouTuber. Like, to be clear, I am not a therapist. I do philosophy and pop culture. I do not do therapy. So I don't, I, I don't know if you're talking to me or somebody in the comments who's a therapist. Um, but you said, I'll give you the philosophy answer. How do you work extreme people working on their bias and their self and how they react to the other side and learn to treat other people like an actual human being and not an animal? Well, we are animals. That probably would help. And then recognizing that you are me and I am you probably helps. Recognizing that it's much more nuanced and complicated would probably help. But recognizing that none of us chose to be here could be part one. But the dilemma is that your beliefs come in and your beliefs tell you why we're here. And if we don't agree on why we're here, it's very hard to humanize one another. Because some people believe you're going to hell for just the way that you look or the skin color that you have. Or some people think you're going to hell because of your orientation. Or some people think you're going to hell because of X, Y, Z. So I would argue that the philosophy answer is to recognize like who you are on this planet, a consciousness, right? You're an evolved animal over time, most likely. Maybe we came from a god. I don't see any evidence for that other than people's beliefs, which are valid, right? Because people have that relationship with their beliefs. But I would say like the best way to humanize somebody is to recognize we are nothing and then we can humanize from there. We aren't, we're just like little babies that were forced into existence and we grow into these adults who form ideas and concepts around everything around us, right? So it's one of those things where for me, when I think about it, it's to remind people like we are each other. When you are mad at the world, you're mad at a part of yourself that won't accept it, right? When you're upset with humans, you're upset that they could make a decision you could never see yourself making. Right? You're upset with the idea of how it relates back to you as a consciousness. Ah, I'm studying to become a therapist and wanted a voice, another voice to try uh, mend the divide. Love it. Congratulations. Best of luck. One of the reasons I won't become a therapist is because there's too many rules and I would break them all. Like one of the reasons I don't do academia is because like I will break all the rules. Like you have to answer to a board. Like you know how Jordan Peterson is getting his license reviewed as he should be. 
I would also w have too much anxiety over that. I wouldn't want the professional relationship with people. I wouldn't be able to like do calls. I wouldn't be able to like run a YouTube channel the way I exactly wanted. Though I do watch some therapists on YouTube. So I love that you're going into that bubble because that's we need good people in that bubble for sure. Um, but it's definitely why I stick to YouTube because I'm like too much of a free spirit in that way. I can't t adhere to a board. But like congratulations on your journey in that regard. You know what I mean? Ah, Discord says I have bias. I might just not be as attached to it as somebody else. Doesn't mean I don't have it just because I am caution. I am cautious by acknowledging it and settling it aside. Set it. Oh my God, Brittany, setting it aside to try and understand. Uh, and was it beyond it? You know what's funny? Um, understand what was beyond it. You know what's interesting is like bias is so insightful into you as a consciousness. It's like, oh man, I feel this way about this. Why do I feel this way? You know, why, why am I moving this way? Why do I have this like judgment, like ready to go? And then I have to ask myself like, well, where did this come from? What is that? And then like tear it apart. You know how I always say your thoughts are like a spider web? You're tearing it apart one thought at a time, really delicately respecting the nuance, respecting that it could break, respecting the fact that you might not get the full strand of understanding even within yourself. That's why the journey never ends, right? So you become a five- there's so much more to that after, but it's always up to you where you stop on the journey. Some people like to stay. Some people like to do different battles with themselves or different with other people. You know what I mean? Oh. But ultimately, the relationship you can have with your consciousness is truly a beautiful one. It's actually, I'm already getting that vibe from Brittany's book. Like, I'm so proud of her so far just listening to it. I've always wished that somebody would just like give Brittany a space to breathe. Give this girl a moment to fucking breathe. Even my own viewers on Twitter, which to be fair, a lot of people hate follow me on Twitter, but they I was putting out a tweet about Britney Spears. I was like, she's dancing with knives because Shakira did a Super Bowl event with knives or whatever that thing was Shakira did. And people were like, that's not what it is. And then of course it came out and she's like, that is what it is. And I bought these prop knives from this old mom and pop shop that was in decline. And the mom and pop shop made a lot more business because of Britney Spears. They were fake knives. And people were like, Brit, like Brit, me, Britney. They're like, Britney, you're crazy. Britney Spears is obviously in, in crisis right now. She's dancing with knives. And I was like, y'all have not played with knives and it shows. Like my job as a consciousness, as a person into philosophy and my relationship that I've had with introspection has led me to not assuming the worst of everybody, but recognizing people can do awful things. People can and are capable, we see it every day, of doing awful, horrible things. They could be related to you. They could be sitting right next to you. They could be on the train over. I'm not going to live my life as if everyone is my enemy and everyone is going to hurt me. But I'm also aware that it could happen. And I radically accept that I could be in a place where a gunman shows up. Hello, ma'am, we just had like three shootings in the U.S., you're just minding your own business and bowling and all of a sudden you're dead, right? Like, ma'am. So it's like, don't live your life as if you're always going to get shot, but don't live your life like you're not. It's got to happen to somebody, ma'am. I thought the knife dance was cool. Me too. I was like, dance, Brittany. Dance. Now, to be fair, she might have been trolling everybody because she had a bandage on her arm. Or maybe she just cut herself like I cut myself all the time. I literally cut myself all of the time. And my partner is just like, can you please? And I was like, sorry. It's probably the neurodivergency, to be honest. I hit corners. I have bruises everywhere. I'm always like cutting myself. And I'm like, oh, oops, my bad. I cut my nail off like a month ago. It's finally regrowing in. I literally cut it off. I was like, ow. And my partner's like, Brittany. And I was like, it's not personal. I'm just like spaced out. And I'm like thinking and I'm rushing. And then all of a sudden it happens. It's like people don't want to ever see Britney as a human again because she's the mentally ill girl. But I would argue mentally ill people do plenty of normal things normal people do. And nobody freaks out when quote unquote normal people do them. Right? Brit is lit fire for, uh, or is lit for that dance. Bro, that dance was so good. She, like she, <laughs> she was killing it, bro. I just think it's fun. That's the one problem with diagnosis is that normies will see you have a diagnosis and blame every action you take on it and then they'll gaslight you into thinking you can never be angry, never be sad, never show emotion ever again because it's just your bipolar, just your borderline, just your schizophrenia, just your depression, just your anxiety. It's like people go, oh, you should get diagnosed and get help. Ooh, but once you do, now we're gonna use it against you. Don't let humans, other people who don't know you, make decisions about how you should see yourself. 
Use people you trust to get feedback. And remember that even people you love and trust have their own biases and prejudice and might not see you clearly either, right? And that happens, right? It's just how it's going to go. That's just how it's going to work. And you have to love people through it and tell them to mind their own goddamn business as well. Dyspraxia, yeah, I'm pretty sure I have that. My partner's pretty sure as well. But, you know, all these diagnoses, girl, left and right. Okay, I'm working on stuff. I'm working on it. I'm getting health care right now in Croatia. We're working on it, you know, but yeah, people love concern trolling. L bro, exactly. <sighs> yeah, I wish there was like, I wish people had tools. Well, I guess they can't. It's difficult because sometimes you really want to tell the truth. You want to know, you want to say everything you know in a situation because you think it matters and will make people see the situation better. But I think even what I constantly learn in this space is that even though people know, who was it? Hold on. Who was I talking to? Oh, I think I was having a discussion on my Discord about this. Like, which YouTubers would I go into business with? And I was like, none of them. And some people were kind of shocked, like, oh, my God, you wouldn't trust so-and-so. They were naming their favorites. Like, you wouldn't trust so-and-so and so-and-so. And so? No. <laughs> Guys, pay attention to the details. Trisha and Ethan were besties, allegedly, or friends enough to do their podcast. They were literally family, broke up. Hassan and Ethan are on the verge of, like, ending leftovers every second because of this issue, right? Look at what's happening with Rosanna and Jimmy. Like, ultimately, when you work with YouTubers, when your bread and butter is associated with somebody else, they better be a diehard homie. And they better be somebody who shares your values. Because what if you're doing a show with somebody, right? And that person steals all your money, rapes somebody, uh, cheats on their spouse and like spreads STIs and gets people pregnant. Like at what point are you going to burn the bridge, right? At what point are you going to be like, hey, like God bless. I'm not, I don't want to engage with this. I don't want to be associated with this, right? And that's the problem is like, I would rather be a solo content creator who does collabs with really cool people than be somebody that goes into business with somebody and ties my values and my money to somebody else because Brittany makes money based off her values. When I put out content and I, look, I get offered lots of money, lots of Okay, on OnlyFans a lot to do things. And I'm always saying, like, I'm so sorry, I don't offer that kind of content. Because for them and for me, like for, for a lot of people, they're like, oh, that's $500 or $1,000 or $2,000 for this like five minute video. But what I'm hearing is like, this is X amount of dollars for this video that will live forever on the internet if this guy decides to post it. And it's work I wouldn't be proud of. If it was work, I would be proud of. Like, I'd brag about it and be like, oh, that's hot. Like, I'm so glad I did that. That's like, but it's always a request of things I don't ever want to see myself doing back in a video. And so that's the problem is like, I, there are just things I will not do no matter how much you paid me. And that's also how I was raised versus other people. That's not how they work. I saw this video on Cut. I would show it to you, but they always flag my videos. Where they asked like people, like 100 people, like, what would you be willing to do for money? And some people were like, oh, for that much money, I'd slap my mom. I'd like kill, like I'd kill somebody for that. Oh my God, I would like do that. And I'm, that's a great question to ask yourself. What would you actually do for money? Be really real with yourself because there's that opportunity somewhere on this planet. And are you actually going to go get it? You know, that's the question. Are you actually going to go get it? Because it's there on this planet the opportunity is always there. And the most of the answers are no. I'm not going to do it. Are you going to do it? I'm not going to do it. Every time I hear these like uh, billionaires that are like, oh, I wouldn't do this again. This was so stressful. I lost connection with my family. Um, we didn't know what we were doing when we got into it, but we couldn't stop once the momentum was going. We saw it through to the end, but it is incredibly stressful, this life that we had, right? I believe them to some extent. And then, of course, everyone says, oh, that's easy to say when you're rich already. But the truth is, is like they had to do this probably as a consciousness, which goes back to determinism in some way, because like they just did what they were always going to do anyways. We all do what we're going to end up doing anyways. This dream some of us have, like one day I'll be a millionaire. Girl, you can be. You have to do the thing, though. You have to do the thing. The question we all have in our life is like, can we be a millionaire and do things we're willing to do? Britney Spears' book is, you know, so I'll give you a little snippet of something I'll say in the podcast. But something that I love about Britney's book is she's saying the same thing that I keep saying and people don't don't want to hear it. That's another thing. You want to tell people things they don't want to hear? Britney wasn't famous 
until she was really famous. She wasn't set until she was really set, right? Uh, Queen was not really famous or set in the way that we know them now. Remember, these people did big concerts with big celebrities who were already established and they were still at any moment ready to fall off. These YouTubers who are like set for life, the reason I think Rosanna probably has a lot of stress about her life, you know what I mean, is that there is a chance she's running out of money. There is a chance she actually didn't establish herself or there is a chance she doesn't want to make less money because she's probably still making really good money, but it's probably not what she saw for herself. She's probably not as satisfied, right? Which you and me could look at her and say like, oh, if I was making Rosanna money, like if I was worth $9 million, I'd be set for life. But again, if you listen to Andrew Schultz, who talks about this, like, oh, he's got a number in mind. When he reaches it, he'll be good, but he's not there yet. And Andrew Schultz is worth millions of dollars, but he's also going to take care of his family. And he also wants to have some longevity and maybe some family wealth. And that's a different game versus my family. Like, I'm not planning on leaving my kids generational wealth. I'm not even having like planning kids necessarily. So there is no reason for me to think of like generational wealth for my family. My hope is that we are able to care for the family members that are alive. And when I die, may somebody else take over. But there is no dream of generational wealth because like, what does that mean? What's the purpose of it? My family is lovely and I love them, but we're very individualistic. We love each other and we would like go to the ends of the earth for each other. But we, none of us want to work together. All of us want to do our own thing and be very individualistic. If we were looking for generational wealth, we would have been on a team. My parents would have made each of us get a really good job and then we all would have gotten jobs that make sense and then we all would have pulled our money together. But we're not doing that. Our values are too different. We're too politically divided. We're too religious divided. We can't and don't want to raise our kids together because as much as our kids want to, like, they would love, be friends, we also are raising the kids differently and values are different. So again, when you look at your life and you think like, I need to make money, who are you making it for? And if it's for you, well, at some point, you don't need that much, sis. Like you don't need that much. You know, if you're not really feeding anyone, taking care of people, like, I want to live a, you know, Graham Stephan kind of life. Very humble. Because it's just how I live now. You know what I mean? I don't think money will change me that much if I ever made, like, a ton of it. Like, millions. Uh, but I definitely would probably just, like, give it to more people. Like, I've got a list of teachers that I want to fund their classrooms. And, of course, I want to pay it off for taxes. Because, you know, if they're win-win. But there's a couple of teachers that I have in mind. I think about that stuff. Like... If I gave each teacher $500 a month and there's five teachers, I can't afford that. I can't afford that. But in the future, that's what my brain does. It's like, oh, I'd love to make enough money to give these teachers like money for their classrooms because the government doesn't pay enough for it. So that's what I think about spending my money on. And that's the closest I get to charity. Otherwise, like you're all on your own. Good luck. I'm okay, I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense, I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess, please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth, and living life as a fool.